There's that famous quote that goes, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The phrase is commonly attributed to Aristotle and referenced when talking about a concept called emergence. Emergence is a phenomenon that happens when a complex system behaves in a way that's impossible to predict, when only looking at its individual parts. It's in the interaction of the collective that leads to the unexpected. Everywhere you look, from deep space to the depths of our own minds, you'll find examples of emergent systems. Which brings us to pizza. In this episode, we're going to explore the theory of emergence by breaking down a margarita pizza into its fundamental ingredients. And we're going to hear from a few experts who are pushing the boundaries of flavor and reimagining how the ingredients all come together. Are you familiar with the origin story of the margarita pizza? Yes. So I think there's a lot of uh, misnomers there. I don't think it is as romantic as the story is made out to be. The story begins in the year 1889 in the city of Naples. One of the city's top pizza makers at the time was summoned to make dinner for Queen Margarita of Savoy. The pizza maker presented three pizzas, and the only one that the queen liked was topped with tomatoes, mozzarella, and basil, a combination which happens to be the colors of the Italian flag. Italians have a way of romanticizing and changing things to make it seem more attractive. What's a better story, then? Tomatoes grew over there, cheese is made over there, that neighbor. Oh, I got some basil here. At its most elemental, pizza is a flat bread with condiments baked onto it. So if the bread is not extremely high quality and you're never gonna make a great pizza. The dough is everything. With sourdough, it's, it's this living community of microorganisms. And once you taste a bread or a pizza made with natural fermentation, it's very difficult to go back. Fermentation is defined as the transformation of food by microorganisms. Sandor Katz describes it as the breaking down of previous forms into new forms a natural process where yeast and bacteria cooperate to create emergent behaviors. In all of our best efforts to harness its power, how much control do we actually have over it? Bread bakers and pizza makers have to be adaptable and you have to constantly have this full sensory awareness of the environmental factors that could change things. Just as in life, there is absolutely no guarantee that you're going to have 100% success. When the margarita arrived in America, the environment was drastically different than it was in Italy, and pizza immediately began to evolve. We don't have the same cheese. We didn't have the same flour. We didn't have the same ovens. So the product begins to morph. Pizza! Pizza! Pizza, 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 everybody loves pizza. Pizza quickly established itself as one of the most popular foods in America. And in each new place it arrived, it found a whole new set of conditions. As it continued to change, the introduction of modern milling transformed the entire industry. Refined white flour became the de facto choice for pizza. It was shelf stable, more predictable, in Article 2 of the True Neapolitan Pizza Regulations, it explicitly requires the use of highly refined flour. When somebody tells me to do something a certain way, I want to know why. If those rules were for good reason, I'd follow them. But it seems to me that we break every single one of those rules because they need to be broken.
My name is Pam Young, and I'm the chef in residence at Blue Hill Stone Barns. I'm making 100% whole grain pizza. The benefits of whole wheat and whole grain in general, and whole foods in general, is the focus of not only my work, but also the work of Stone Barns. It's definitely more challenging to work with. It behaves very differently than white flour. It requires a little bit more attention. The grains can change seasonally, so that variability is something that people aren't usually acquainted with when working with flour. Um, and I think changing that mindset is a huge challenge. Flour is one of those commodity ingredients that people would never consider to be alive, but actually it is. And it, for me, becoming more intimate with that every day is part of the great joy of working with it. For so many decades, this country has favored yield over flavor and over nutrition, and we're sort of looking to prioritize flavor and nutrition above all else. If we really want to create greater change, then we have to look at how to get more people using whole grain and how to make it something that more people feel like they have within their grasp. Most people in this country grew up eating a lot of pizza, and so they have those memories of what that pizza should taste like and look like. The reason why we decided to use pizza as the vehicle is because it's such a well-loved and ubiquitous food. The thing that I really want people to say is that it's really delicious, not it's really delicious for whole grain. I think a lot of people who come here come with a little, a little bit of doubt and end up um, being surprised. When it comes to tomatoes, there's no question that San Marzano's are the Ferraris of the pizza world. Grown in the volcanic soil of Mount Vesuvius, they've become an icon. Italy's Mount Vesuvius pointed to eruption. New craters opened around the rim of the historic volcano, pouring forth rivers of molten rock. San Marzano's might be the most popular, but there are over 15,000 varieties of tomatoes in existence. For me, there is no reason to use San Marzano tomatoes on a margarita pizza. I'm not interested in tradition. I'm not interested in what they say is the best tomato out there. I want proof. I want delicious pizza. That means using the most delicious tomato I can find. Tomatoes are in the family of plants called nightshades. In medieval times, nightshades were steeped in folklore with a reputation as a deadly hallucinogenic and association with witchcraft. Tomatoes were first brought to Italy from South America during a period of time called the Columbian Exchange, a time when food, ideas, and disease were exchanged between the old and new world. This merging of cultural and biological influences profoundly changed the course of history and ultimately paved the way for the margarita. My name is Jim Myers. I'm a vegetable breeder here at Oregon State University. My mandate here is to develop new vegetable varieties for growers. They're kind of these eureka moments in breeding. A lot of it is, is just lots of numbers, recording data, but there'll be these times when you're walking through the plots and looking at varieties, and then all of a sudden you see this particular plot that has the things, and that's kind of a eureka moment. Okay, that's the one. Jim and his team recently developed a tomato called the Midnight Roma by breeding together the Indigo Rose and the Oregon Star. I was hoping for something like this large Oregon Star. What we got out was smaller, but it shaped more like a San Marzano. The color of the Midnight Roma is a result of high concentrations of pigments called anthocyanins, a class of compounds with antioxidant and antimicrobial effects. Just visually, they are stunning. You know, they're just really pretty tomatoes. The flavor, I think, is exceptional for a, a Roma tomato. The theory of emergence, I think, is something that operates in plant breeding. The best way to think about it is living systems are nonlinear dynamical beings. What they do is more than the sum of the parts. It's this, these interactions between various pathways, biochemical pathways in an organism that give you these various properties. And Maybe someday we could predict it, <laughs> but at this point, we can't do that. So we know in a general way what we're going to get when we make a cross between two varieties. 
but we don't really know exactly what we're going to get. Quite often you get surprises, but that's part of the fun of the, the breeding process. The best part of the piece is such a treat you're gonna find yourself doing it and chewing it. Now everybody's saying. The cheese is what everybody loves, right? It's a healthy dose of, of fat and protein, and who doesn't love melted cheese? My name is Salvatore Pisani, a cheesemaker and owner of Jersey Girl Cheese here on Hillcrest Orchard and Dairy. Real mozzarella should taste like the milk that it originates from. And we have this beautiful herd of Jersey cows that produces such a high quality milk. They have all different kinds of personalities. You know, you get the feisty ones that want to fight. Then you get the really curious ones where they're literally walking up to your tripod and you know, checking it out. The cows have to be happy. You know, we, we're lucky to have some happy cows. Our herd manager does a great job. If they're stressed out, you can tell right away. The cows are eating what the cows are supposed to eat, which is grass. And grass has a lot of chlorophyll and pigment. Um, and that ends up in, in their milk and then in, in their cheese. We have this beautiful yellow golden tint in our mozzarella. Some people, you know, see it and they think like it might be sour. Honestly, this is a natural product. The environment that the cows are in, you know, affects it greatly. All throughout the year, it changes. And the inconsistency of it is to be celebrated. Sal's cheese is a product of its living environment, influenced by shifting weather patterns and the amount of rain that falls each year, which is directly tied to the amount of chlorophyll that ends up in each batch of milk. Any disruptions to the cow's homeostasis creates a state of stress, activating the endocrine system, which directly affects milk production. It all coalesces into the cheese. It's almost like there's a new story every day, the changes that we go through on a daily basis with the milk. Hopefully um, people here in New Jersey, you know, taste our product and understand, you know, what we're trying to do. We're bringing Southern Italy right here in, in Sussex County. Herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Once the basil hits the hot pizza, all of those aromas just explode. Finally, the last ingredient, the punctuation mark, the symbol of hope, an expression so simple yet so provocative. Basil, it's the smell of childhood, the smell of summer. It's a song, and without it, no margarita as we know it. It's this floral high note that is unmistakable. Uh, is a margarita pizza good without the basil? Yes, but... Is it a margarita pizza then? Uh, no, it's a plain pizza. I, I love when we can, we can really see and taste just the cheese by itself. And then I love to be able to taste the tomatoes by themselves and just really appreciate how good of a tomato that is. And then there's this other area where the cheese meets the sauce and it creates this rosy pink area where it's not cheese, it's not sauce, it's they've come together and they've, they've married, they've become one. There's this meeting of the two that I just, I go ape shit over. <laughs> there will always be an obsession with individual heroes, but heroes don't exist in a vacuum. When emergence happens, it's almost like magic when all the parts come together in perfect harmony. It becomes the job of those who understand its power to shepherd it into something we could hold in our hands and to put lightning in a bottle. Fresh baked bread topped with tomatoes that have sweetness and acidity, mozzarella cheese that has protein and fat, and basil that is this crazy floral herbaceous scent. And the way that they come together is 
dramatically more delicious than taking a bite of each one individually.